Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the QX Financial Podcast. Today, we're going to continue with the truths about life insurance, part two. Hello, Charlie. Welcome. Thank you for joining us again. It's good to be here. Perfect. So we're going to start with a, with a first question for the day as to some of the myths and some of the people things about life insurance that may or may not be true. So why don't we start with the first question of the day? Sure. So the first question is, I have group life insurance at work. Is this all the life protection I need? It's a very common question that we get, and the sure answer is no. Most employers do not offer more than $150,000 of coverage, and that is group coverage, meaning that it doesn't belong to you. If you were ever ever to change jobs or you get fired or the company closes down or whatever, you will lose that insurance coverage. So I don't think I need to tell any of you, you know, what can you really do with $150,000 when the breadwinner is gone, right? So most families will need way, way more than that. We're not saying you shouldn't have it. We're not saying it's bad, but you definitely want to have enough of personal, personally owned life insurance. That will be probably a better strategy. I also think something most people don't know about group life insurance, specifically from their work, is that many times the employer provides this because they can use it as a tax write-off. Mm -hmm. And because they can use it as a tax write-off, that means that any benefit the family gets from that policy is actually taxable, um, if if not all of it, at least some of it. Um, and so not a lot of people realize that. And so when it comes to a point where they actually have to make a claim, uh, most families are very surprised and quite dismayed that now they have this big tax bill. Very true. Exactly right. So unless you're 100% completely uninsurable, then you definitely want to make sure that you have your own personally owned life insurance policy. Perfect. So this leads to the next question uh, for you, Sherry. Is it true that I should purchase life insurance equal to twice my annual income? Well, it might be, but that's kind of a, a very down and dirty way to kind of figure out how much life insurance you need. Um, and most of the time, it's that's not going to be true or even close to enough, really. Uh, when you're thinking about how much life insurance you're going to need, it's not just your annual income that you need to be thinking about. Uh, and in fact, if it's just twice your annual income, many times that's not going to be nearly enough for what your family is going to need if they suddenly can't have you there helping to produce an income. Uh, so most of the time you're going to be looking at how long do I have before I anticipate retiring and how much am I going to need for other things that my now single spouse might need to help uh, to provide for either themselves or the children that may be left behind. So other things are a consideration, you know, school funding for your kids' school if you have children or paying off your house if you have a mortgage. Those kinds of things also need to be taken into consideration. That is correct. And we we here, we at QX Financial, we use a, a concept called the human value index, which is, sounds complicated, but it's really just a, a process, a calculation to figure out what is the right amount for you. So if you would like us to help us with that, our contact information is at the bottom in the description of the video, and we can set up, a, we can do a human value calculation so you understand how much life insurance you should actually own. Okay? For sure. All right, that go that leads to the next question that says, "Can people in poor health qualify for life insurance?" We get it a lot, right? Because unfortunately, uh, a lot of our citizens, you know, are in bad shape. They can be, they can have uh, a previous history of medical issues. Uh, it could, they could be overweight, which is a factor. Uh, build is a factor. It could be a lot of factors. What I will always recommend is. Talk to professional, talk to us, and we can let you know. Most people think that because they have a particular disease or situation, they're uninsurable. And a lot of the times it's not true. It's very, very hard to not qualify for life insurance 
Uh, so what I would tell clients is let's try it. Let's, let's fill out a questionnaire. Let's ask around. It doesn't cost you anything, but we can do all that work and ship around for you to find a company that will offer you the most cost-effective coverage. So the answer really is no. You could be in poor health and still get some protection. There are policies in our industry that are 100% guaranteed issue. That may or may not be the best fit for you at the moment, but they do exist. So once again, talk to a professional. We can help. All right. Go ahead, Charlie. So the next question, my spouse is the sole breadwinner and I stay home with the children. Why would I need life insurance? Well, I think you have some expertise on that, Charlie. So why don't you answer that? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. I do. So I was a stay-at-home mom for a really long time and my spouse was the sole breadwinner. And even now I work from home and so I, but I still take care of my children. They aren't at daycare. And so, um, and in fact, I have one that I homeschool. So we just have a lot of fun around here. So when we're looking at coverage for my family, uh, we have to take that into consideration when looking at um, health, when looking at life insurance coverage. Yes, I want coverage on my on my spouse because um, he does provide over half of our family's living. But I also need coverage for myself, even if I wasn't working, because the things that I am doing for my family do have a cost. If I was not here, I would my husband would have to um, put the children in daycare. He would have to pay someone to help take them to activities. Um, you know, there are other things that that he would have to do. In some families, they want to at that point, they would need to have a family member come and live in the home to help provide some of that care. And that might carry a cost as well if they don't live nearby with, you know, moving them perhaps even across countries and across different parts of the world. So those are kinds of things that you need to be taking into consideration. And in fact, when all is said and done, my policy has a higher coverage than my husband's does because of the services that I provide. Exactly right. So every case is different, but I will say for most households, I think Sharadi is correct. Even if the spouse is not working, whether it's male or female, doesn't really matter. The the the, the child care, cooking, cleaning, you know, keeping out of the household, all that costs money. Those are men hours or women hours that are invested. So yeah, there will be a significant financial loss for the family, for the household, if an event like that was to happen. 100% agree. All right. So that leads me to the last question. And I, I'd like to get your insight on this, Shiradi, as well. Uh, sometimes the client says, hey, you know, we are retired. We're 65. We're empty nesters. Uh, our home is paid off. Do we really need life insurance? So my take on this one is it really depends on uh, what you envision happening when you do pass away. If you do have family that you want to provide a legacy for, life insurance could be a really great way to guarantee that you are leaving a legacy to that family. Um, if you have something that you're really passionate about, say you have a church or uh, an organization that you just really love and you want to ensure that they continue going on, uh, you can you can have a life insurance policy and name them the beneficiary so that when you do pass away, perhaps they'll have a scholarship in your honor. Exactly right. And in addition to what Shradi mentioned, what about inflation? What happens when the male side dies first and the female side stays on for another 10 or 15 or 20 years? How is she going to be able to increase her income? Right? So life insurance can come in and pay you know, at 70, 75, 80, whenever the, one of the spouses passes away and bring a lump sum that can help that survivor spouse continue to live with a, with the same overall lifestyle. You know, all of, all of us are watching the news. We have, we have seen what inflation can do in a year or two. Imagine that over 20 or 15 years. It's a lot of money. Uh, so one of the less expensive ways to create that inflation protection benefit is through use of life insurance. Um, and, the, and the last thing that I, that I will say on this is what about long-term care? What about if the spouses get sick? 
Uh, there's a lot of modern life insurance contracts that allows and gives you access to that, that benefit while still alive when there is chronic illness or critical illness or long-term care issues. Now, this is a very complicated area. There's a lot of legislation and laws and regulations that talks about these things. So, but I will encourage you to talk to a, a professional like ours to get the right answer for you and your family. But just remember that, yeah, those things can be, life insurance can be used to pay for future healthcare costs like long-term care if you set up correctly. Right. And that's really the key is to make sure that you have someone that you trust and that they know what is going on. Um, that's one of the benefits of having an advisor uh, is that we're plugged into the system. We know what is going on. We know the legislation that's happening and we can help keep ahead of that so that uh, you have the, the best knowledge in your back pocket. Exactly. So let us know if we can help. Thank you, Sharadit, for helping me to do this short video. I hope you guys found it uh, informational. If you have any questions, once again, our information is below on the description of the video. Look forward to speaking to some of you in the future. And thank you again, Sharadit. Thanks. Bye. Have a good day.